Hi there, this is Patrick with uh, On Learning Point. Um, I wanted to create this uh, video, and hopefully it'll be shorter than longer, although I have a feeling it might go a little bit long, on uh, how to upgrade your Moodle site from version 2.5 to 2.6. Um, if you are upgrading your site from a version older than 2.2, then uh, what you'll want to do is follow the 2.2 upgrade release first uh, rather than doing it this way. Now this uh, is very similar to a video that I created uh, not too long ago, just last year, which was a uh, video for 2.3 to 2.4. Um, so there's going to be a lot of similarities if you saw that one as well. Um, so let's just uh, go ahead and get started right away. Um, since this will probably end up going a little bit long. Um, first thing you probably want to do is just go out to the Moodle 2.6 release notes. Here you can see all the, the great information about what has been fixed, uh, what hasn't been fixed, um, what's supported and what's not supported. Uh, for our purposes though, we're going to get right in on the command line uh, and get started with uh, actually upgrading the site itself. Uh, one of the thing, the next page that I want to show you here before we start with that is the actual upgrade page and this is the one that we're going to be following uh, very closely. Um, there's a uh, good information in here on how to set your site in to um, to create backups, uh, how to actually set up your um, some information on here. Here's some information on how to upgrade to 2.2. Here's the maintenance mode. mode. Um, my site isn't really a live production site, so I am not really going to worry about that. Uh, Add-ons and updates, um, and so on and so forth. So I urge you to read through that very carefully. Um, this is all golden information. Um, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and dive straight in. So what we'll do is we're going to switch over to the command line. And you can see here that I've already connected uh, to my server um, and also actually switched to the directory uh, that, uh, that, that we're going to be working in. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just see that, well, what, what do we ha actually have in this, in this directory? So what I did is I have a Moodle directory. I also have a next version, a previous version. Uh, this just kind of helps me with testing. Now, one of the things that they say in the release notes is that you should not, um, you should not ever extract your files over the old version of files. So we're actually going to be doing a completely fresh version uh, of the installation, connecting back to the existing old database, um, and then, um, well, that's the best way to do it because then there'll be the least amount of corruption, the least amount of issues. In the old versions, and, and still in many versions of the software, you still have to update the files and copy things over. And I actually have one uh, service, one server that I work with, and it'll actually cr um, parse through um, uh, code files, insert new code into those code files, um, and then execute those files, create executables, and then run against those executables. Talk about you know having a lot of chances for for errors so uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to copy the config file uh, out of the Moodle directory right now uh, so let's do that first and since uh, this directory right here you can see we have a couple directories here that are running as EC2 and root we have kind of a mixed environment uh, I need to run the the sudo command here for everything otherwise it's not going to work so we're going to run the, uh, here, config, config.php, and we're just going to bring that down one directory. And he did not like that. Hang on one second. Let me try it one more time. There we go. And that should work. So now when we do an ls or an ll, uh, we have our directory, our config file here. No, we don't. So phP so what this command is doing right here is going uh, down one directory slash 
and it should put us into the directory that we're in right now. And it did not. Okay, I, th I think I see what was uh, what I was doing wrong. When I did the uh, the dot dot slash, it would take me down below the current directory. Um, and so what I wanted to do is just do this command here. Uh, this would take me, and sh I can see that I have now the config file that's in there. Now the config file is important because it's going to contain all your database information and your database connection information. So that's kind of why we want to create a copy of that. Now the, the next command um, is to create a backup of the actual Moodle directory. And so we're going to just move the Moodle directory into a Moodle.backup directory. And to do that, we're just going to run this command. Now, of course, I need to run sudo here. So I'm just going to add that. Now, if we look here, that we can see now we have a Moodle.backup uh, directory um, and no actual Moodle directory. Now, there's one trick that I want to show you here. Um, and... And that trick is just how do you download the software to your server? If you have SSH access like I do, uh, the best uh, option is to use the wget command. Um, a lot of people, what they'll do if they're using FTP, they'll download the, um, the, um, the zip file uh, to their desktop, unzip everything, and then upload everything back up to the server. Um, it's not, not a great way to go, and there's a couple reasons for it. Uh, one is you could your files can get corrupted on the way down. It could get corrupted during the zip extract. It could also get uh, corrupted, and this is most likely the case. It'll get corrupted as you're uploading the files again, or maybe it's not corrupted, but maybe the files will get interrupted. Um, and so it only takes one file, one important file, uh, to get corrupted before something bad actually happens with your site and. You, you may not understand what what's actually wrong with it. You may think that the upgrade actually went great, but uh, but it actually was because of this one file that may have not made it to it. So for that reason, I always re recommend the wget. And let me show you how to do that. So first of all, what we need to do is grab the URL for the download directory. So uh, I just went to download.moodle.org. You can see that there is the beta version right here. Um, if you're I would recommend not running a production version uh, with beta. There's going to be some security issues with the software, um, and so you want to wait for the actual release in order to run production software. But if you're just testing, uh, then it's a good, good way to go. So I'm going to uh, run the, the TGZ uh, file here, and so which is the easiest one that you could do on Linux. Um, now, if you're using Windows, um, the zip file would be definitely easier. Uh, here, it gives me an, an option to save it. Uh, I don't really want to save it to my local desktop, so I'm going to cancel that. Uh, now you can see if the download doesn't start automatically, then click here to manually download. And that's, this is what I want. I want to right click and then do a copy on the link address. So if I paste that in there, you can see the actual direct um, file download. Um, and so th that's exactly what I want. So let's switch back over here. I'm going to type in the command wget, which actually stands for uh, webget. I did a right click. I did a paste on that URL that we just grabbed. Uh, it's going to download, although, so just like, because I'm in a directory that I can't write to, I just need to choose uh, sudo. And it only takes, this server is very fast, so it only takes moments for it to download. Uh, if we do a list directory, we can see, here's the one that I downloaded earlier, uh, and then here's the one that I downloaded just now, uh, just seconds ago. So, after that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to extract that directory. So we're just going to do it right here. Um, I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to also do a I'm going to do a sudo here as well, just to uh, let, make sure that it's going to work. And there's something wrong here. And it looks like I just uh, did a little typo on the actual directory name. Uh, this is because the um, 
what it's actually called is a little bit different uh, than the file that you're actually uh, downloading. So I think this will work right here. Yes, you can see all these files are for extracting right now. Uh, next thing we want to do is we're going to want to go in and we're going to want to copy back that that config file um, into into the directory. Now I created my own backup file, or you could uh, do it right from this uh, backup directory that they created. Um, since I already have it here, I'm going to do a sudo copy config uh, into the Moodle directory. Um, and then that should do it right there. So now it's gonna uh, now it's uh, copied over into that folder. Next step is uh, any themes that you have, you would copy those over. I don't have any themes uh, loaded on this server, so I'm not gonna worry about that. And then any modifications that you run uh, also. Here's some uh, instructions around cron. Um, I'll let you read those on your own since uh, it's gonna be easier. For you to run to, for, uh, well, for you to go through it if you're, if that's something that's important to you. Um, this server is really just a test server at this point, so I am not running that. Uh, next thing we would do is um, go back here. Uh, there is one thing that I think is important, um, and we can see that the root root Moodle is running as the root directory now. And uh, I don't think that's what we want to want. So we're going to change this so it's running under the the EC2 user. Um, I don't know that it, that it really matters. It was just sort of the way I had it configured before. So I think that's what I want to do. So in order to do that, I'm going to do a, a, well, we have to do a sudo first. We're going to do a chumo, chumode, which is a change um, directory, I believe change uh, you know I'm not really sure exactly what it stands for but it means change mode I believe uh, and we're going to choose EC2 do a colon EC2 so the first one is the user second one is the group and we're going to type in Moodle here uh, and it looks like I might have something wrong here I see what I did. I actually mixed up the uh, the commands here. So what we want to do is actually do a, a chown, which is a change owner. Um, and then we're going to do EC2, EC2, and then Moodle. And you can see that I am not root, so we'll just do a sudo. Um, and then I think what we'll do is do a dash r. And what does the dash r do? It means it's recursive. So anything underneath that directory is going to be changed now. So now if we look here, we can see, indeed it is EC2. And now if we go into the Moodle directory, we can see that it also, everything should be EC2. And that's what that recursive did. Everything underneath and inside that directory now has become um, the right directory. So now, uh, without further ado, why don't we give it a try? Um, I don't know if you saw my previous video, uh, but this is um, running on an instance of uh, Amazon Web Services and a cloud server. Uh, so we would just go in here, grab our public DNS, uh, and copy that. And we're going to just paste that in here. You can see that that went to our page. Now this is our the moment of truth. We're going to type in Moodle here, and in theory, if everything went correctly, it should start upgrading the database and detecting that it is an old database. So we can see that we're running a, a beta version, and that's okay in this instance since we're not running a production server. Uh, your Moodle files have been changed, it's set to automatic. Do you want to upgrade? Yeah. Let's just click on continue there, and then we'll start upgrading. Now this take a, might take a couple moments, uh, so I may pause the video um, as as needed. Let's see, this ser server is very up to date uh, with uh, most most things, so um, I suspect that all the prerequisites are already installed, which they are. 
Now, if you see any red flags here, absolutely pay attention to that. You can, you might be able to get past it, but um, if you do so, you most likely will end up shooting yourself in the foot. And this, and this is really a, a case where if you have an older server, that's that's really where you run into these problems. Um, this is going to be checking all of the uh, plugins that's going to be uh, upgraded. Uh, here, we're just going to blow through this. Missing from disk. This is an add-on for my mobile. Not sure what this is, but uh, we're just going to click on upgrade mobile database now. I'm going to pause this video. This most likely will end up taking several minutes. Uh, you can see it filling in um, each of the systems that it's, that it's upgrading right now. And so once you see that the scroll uh, bar on the right hand side has stopped uh, scrolling down, just scroll to the very bottom of the, the page and you'll see a small little continue button down here. Just click on continue when you're ready. And there you are. So now what we can do is go ahead and log into our server. Um, if everything worked out correctly, uh, it should um, have uh, no problems logging in. One way you can verify that you're actually running the 2.6 version is to uh, scroll over under the administrative tools, uh, this looks like there are some new options here. Uh, we're just going to blow through this and uh, not really worry about that. Uh, it's probably something that you should spend a couple minutes going through and looking at. Um, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to click on Save Changes. Um, I'm sure this is uh, something that you could go back and set if you needed to. Uh, also. Depending on the amount of content that you have loaded on your server, you may need to go in and tweak some of those uh, SCORM settings uh, that I saw go by. Um, and I, I'm not really 100% sure of the, uh, the ramifications of doing that. So what we want to do is just go over here, double check that, uh, yeah, indeed we're running 2.6 beta. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time to listen and uh, view this video. And if you ever have any um, questions, I uh, wanted to just direct you over here to our contact form, which is onlearningpoint.com slash contact. Uh, if there's anything I can help you out with uh, or any questions that I can answer, I'd be happy to. So just click on your name, your email, uh, type in some comments, and uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching this uh, video and I uh, hope you have a good day. Thank you.